All right, guys, I'm going to channel my inner James Bond today, possibly, <laughs> with the uh, B&T GHM 9. Really cool piece of hardware. Let's have a go on it here. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Welcome back, everybody. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right. Really cool piece of hardware here. You guys might be familiar with the Scythe Spectre. Uh, really oddball Italian produced machine gun. Use these really weird coffin mags and everything. Uh, this gun definitely draws some very similar lines from that gun. Uh, this is a Swiss made uh, variant, obviously. Uh, when you get into the B&T stuff, very, very, very high quality uh, firearms. You know, they are priced uh, in line with their quality. Uh, but if you are looking for excellent quality, B&T makes some really, really nice stuff, uh, no matter what you run into. Uh, in terms of some of their PCC and pistol caliber options that they offer, uh, the prices can kind of range a little bit. Uh, I want to say these are around fifteen, sixteen hundred in that ballpark. Now this one obviously is equipped with uh, some other cool accessories, which drive the price up. Uh, when you compare it to something like their APC nine K, all right, this particular uh, pistol caliber uh, carbine, uh, this one is going to run certainly a good bit more money. Um, so different style of construction, um, different overall vibe that's going on with the gun. You do have a generous amount of pick rail space here on the top of the receiver. Uh, plenty of rail space. We got an AFG that had to be cut down to uh, work on here. We got this one topped off with an X300 Ultra from Surefire with their pressure pad. Uh, this one's wearing a Silencer Co. Mega 9K. This suppressor has had thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds ran through it. And uh, it's been holding up really great. It's one of our favorite suppressors here on the channel. Uh, it, it may not be the quietest, but I like the compact nature of it, and it really takes the edge off of just about anything you shoot out of a 9mm. Uh, this is a Trigicon MRO that is on this particular gun. All right. Uh, I would like to mention something quickly, too, um, about the magazine compatibility and the different um, lowers that you can get for the B&T series uh, between the APC-9K, the uh, uh, G, uh, GHM, and everything like that. So the magazines are a straight, st staggered column arrangement. And they work fairly well. They are polymer. We're going to shoot the gun a little bit more, but you can get Glock compatible lowers, and they also make a lower for the SIG 320 as well, which is really cool. So some of you guys that are really into the M17 or the M18, or uh, let's just say a military unit wanting to have cross compatibility between their service pistol and a uh, PCC, it gives you the option to be able to run the M17, M18 mags in this particular setup as well, or you can get it set up for Glock mags. I will say the B&T mags are not the most uh, robust thing I've ever seen. Uh, it does remind me of the situation that's occurring with the Strybogs, um, where sometimes they just break and split. Um, if you've dropped one of these mags loaded, it will break, no matter where you drop it. The ground, cement, uh, wood, Anything, if it takes even the slightest hit, they break super, super easy. I've already broken two of these magazines and I actually went to bring some of my mags over to do this video and I noticed that just from leaving this mag loaded in my go bag, there's already a split developing on the top of this one. We are going to try to run this magazine with that little split on the top of the lips, but you would think that for, you know, the $60, $65 price range that these mags sell for, that they would at least be steel lined like a Glock or maybe have metal reinforced feed lips or something. But you look at the stuff that, um, you know, Grand Power is going through with the Strybog and they did their like Gen 2 magazines with the enforced steel lips. Uh, that seems to help a considerable amount. Um, just something I want to mention. We are going to try this mag that's got the little split on it just to see if it'll run. All right, this is 147 grain CCI Blazer ammunition. Uh, let's give the gun a little try. Now the B&T mags just kind of stick out straight like this. Um, the Glock mag lower, which I did order, that we're going to do a separate video on the APC with the Glock uh, lower. I, I went ahead and ordered one from B&T. Charging handle on this can be swapped out to either side, just like the APC-9. The lower is compatible between the APC-9. So whether you go with this series of B&T, or whether you go with the GHM, 
uh, the lowers are the same. So in terms of the manual of arms, uh, they are uh, very similar. This one has a gear head works uh, tail hook installed on it with a folding brace adapter. Puts the uh, gun into a nice compact configuration if you wish. All right, let's have some fun. Yes, sir, this thing is a bullet delivery device, boys and girls. Really nice piece of hardware. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Woo! Man. Cool stuff. All right, safety's on. All right, so in terms of the controls, there's a little bit different series of setups I've noticed between some of these different BNTs. Uh, the APC and this one are set up slightly different. So you have your magazine release right here. This button only serves as a bolt stop or as a bolt release. It won't lock it to the rear, it just releases it. And on this particular lower compared to the APC, you got this little button under here. You push up and that locks the bolt to the rear. So there's a separate control to lock the bolt to the rear, another control to bring her home, okay? But the cool thing about it is this lower will drop on the APC and I can use them vice versa if I want. Uh, this is a trigger, aftermarket trigger from AIM Surplus. Really, really nice trigger. It reminds me very much of like a Timney or an Elfman. Really high quality trigger. All right, shoot the gun a little bit more. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right. <laughs> not running too bad uh, we are going to go ahead and try our uh, mag that's got the little crack in it i feel like when we put it into the in the tower here i think it's going to squeeze it back together and could possibly run okay i just would like to try it um doesn't really put a ton of pressure on it i have a feeling we might have some malfunctions out of this mag but let's just try it just for academic purposes all right, take out our sodas here. <laughs> well, mag worked, that's cool. So um, guys, we'll be revisiting both of these videos when we get the uh, Glock fed lower. And honestly, I wouldn't mind maybe picking up one of the 320 lowers too, because I've really come to enjoy the M17. Uh, it is such a great gun. I love that SIG and all. So I think it's really smart on BNT's part to offer the different uh, you know, lowers. Uh, they're like 400 bucks uh, in that ballpark, I think, um, is, is what I paid for my Glock fed one. I haven't gotten it yet. But as soon as I get it in, we'll definitely do a video and we'll try the Glock lower out in the APC 9K as well as the uh, GHM. I'd like to thank my stepson, Jacob, for, yeah, yeah, weird sponsor <laughs> for today's video <laughs> is my stepson bought this gun. And uh, this is one of his personal ones and he wanted us to come out and maybe check it out and see what we thought about it. And uh, it does have a little more heft than the APC, uh, but... It is a very pointable and usable gun, and I, I love the folding brace mechanism. It's a super, super nice, high quality type of rig. When we get that Glock lower, uh, we will certainly get out here and play with them and let you guys know what we uh, end up finding out. And honestly, you know, since I did have one of my magazines break when it dropped and uh, hit the ground, and then this one's got that bad crack in it, I think what is probably worth doing we're gonna do a magazine torture test on some of the PCC mags. All right, we'll test the Strybog magazine. We'll test this magazine. Uh, we will test um, the Scorpion magazine, anything that's polymer like that. Uh, we'll try to round all of those up and we're gonna do some drop testing. We'll do some impact testing. Uh, we'll try all different types of stuff and we'll see which of those magazines holds up the best. 
Um, the Scorpion mags have been pretty well proven. They've done well, but it is worth noting, I do have Scorpion mags as well as Strybog mags that have split up here at the top just like this one has. So I, I wouldn't say that it's a stab at B&T to say that this is a problem that exists in most uh, polymer magazines that aren't metal lined and not so much just this magazine or any of the others. So it's just worth noting that this can happen to any polymer magazine and has happened to my CZ mags uh, and my Strybog mags as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Always a fun day to shoot a BNT. These things are the Swiss watches of the firearms world. They are fantastic. They are certainly the top of the heap. If you want, uh, you know, one of the best ones out there, uh, any of the BNT offerings, you're never going to go wrong. They are very, very high quality guns. And I think it's smart on their part to offer the different lowers uh, just to add some flexibility for the end user. Certainly um, merited uh, thing. Uh, at least they recognize uh, the potential flaws of this magazine and give people the option uh, to use different mags if they want. So uh, good on their part to recognize that and respond to uh, what, you know, what the end user needs. Uh, have a great day. I'd definitely like to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase uh, man cans or t-shirts and paraphernalia over on Ballistic Inc. Um, all those funds go back to supporting the channel. Thank you so very much. Have a great day. See you next time.